hope you guys have picked up on the fact that we here at Eons of Battle love cool terrain. Not just cool terrain, but perfect thematic, dynamic terrain that lets us get the most out of our games, not just playing on a board, but living in it. Terrain is that special spice that makes games more enjoyable. Tabletop war games blur the lines between strategy games like Risk, Chess, and Monopoly, and role-playing games like Dungeons & Dragons, Pathfinder, and Monopoly. To make our terrain dreams a reality, we couldn't do it alone, so we brought in a team. An artist Licorice and sculptor Radium Minis. And with our powers combined, we are making the terrain we want to play on every month. This month, we wanted to delve into a natural environment, a cave. But not just a cave, but a dank, psychedelic goblin rave cave. And no, it has nothing to do with Nick buying the Gloomspite Gets Battle Force. I'm going to show you how to turn this huge pile of parts into the coolest, most trippiest cave system you have ever seen. And I'm going to do it fast. So let's build it. This piece is like the size of my head. Ah, talk about line of sight blocking. Oh, super glue, you're a cruel mistress. But you do get the job done. Baking soda. Let's make that super glue dry fast. Super glue is holding really, really well. Although it must be the top notch Soraya Tech resin this is all printed out of. And speaking of the best resin you can get, if you like this channel and you like what we do, a great way to support us would be following the link in the description below and checking out some Soraya Tech resin for yourself. And don't worry if you don't have a resin printer. Our sculptor Radium Minis has printed a couple of these pieces with FDM and they also look great. Now these wonderful little mushrooms are not just fungus, but they're actually vantage points for the game of Kill Team. Ah, it's so, such a spooky, wonderful cavern. This is exactly how I want the layout to be. And I have all of these lovely pieces of organic cover. I want to take this and transfer it to the foam but I also want the foam to be on an angle. All right, so this thing really shows off what I need to do because right here we've got a two and a half inch gap and I want this middle section of the board to actually be raised up about an inch. So I gotta make a little bit of a raised area here just for the platforms to stand on, a big middle section that's at least an inch and then over here, I gotta get an inch and a half somehow. All right, I think that makes sense to me. That should all work. Just gotta cut foam to match my drawings. How am I gonna do this? Am I just gonna free ball it? I bet I can. Fourteen and a half. Middle is 12, 13 and a half. All right, so we got level base, level one, and level two. Look at that. Now, let me see, what do I want to get rid of? Smooth it out here. Let me cut this to follow the shape of these a little closer. There we go, now I have something to follow. Now I don't recommend this, but you can melt the foam with a lighter. I can start gluing. Ooh, but you know what's one thing I forgot? I should have probably tried to fit in these little stalagmites before I glued it down. I want to use these little light cover pieces around the edges of the foam to make them look a little bit more impressive. There we go. Now I want to sink these little stalagmites into the foam. And 
and then I just sink it in, and then it's flush. I think I want to put the sculpta mold on all of these little bits first, and then put on the rest of it, and then put on more sculpta mold. Ooh, too much. The sculpta mold leaves behind a really lovely texture, but this foam is still perfectly flat. So I want to crush in a little bit of texture with these little pieces of concrete I found in my backyard. Push it down until it really breaks the foam. And it leaves behind a nice grit. It's perfect. I mean, it should be. I took 10 tries to uh, line it all up, but man, that is just right. Over here, I want to make a little water feature. Put a little water in there, and it also doubles as if a guy wants to just hop inside, he's got a little bit of cover. I'm gonna glue down this big old shroom. I'm gonna put it right next to the walls, just so it kind of just be, makes this into a one big piece of terrain. Some of the joints on these tops look a little bit too noticeable for my taste. So I'm just gonna use a little more sculpt -a mold just to blend them together. It's beautiful. Ah, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of that really awkward scene in Matrix 2, the rave scene, where all of those sweaty people are just dancing for like four minutes with no dialogue. Ah, I love Matrix 2. Time to prime. Now for a little white primer. Nothing like a good old fashioned Zenithal to bring out all the little details. Now for some color. Now I wanna keep the board as bright as I possibly can because I'm gonna be putting on a lot of washes and washes are gonna really darken it. The primer did a decent job of bringing it up to white so I'm gonna try some really, really thin inks. A little orangey yellow. That yellow ink is a really powerful color. But you know what? This is a rave cave, and I think it needs a little something else. Let's see what a little blue green has to offer. This color is really dark, so I gotta be careful. Magenta. Magenta has never let me down in the past. There's no good reason why it should work on this board with these colors, but I want to try. I want to see what happens. Let's just see what we see. I do like it. It definitely adds more colors. It does a nice separation between these types of mushrooms and these types of mushrooms. I absolutely love how it looks and that's making me terrified for the wash because I do want the wash just to pick out every single little detail and piece of texture, but it'll fundamentally change what this board looks like. Yeah, nice orangey red. The key to a nice staining wash is to use lots and lots of medium. Matte medium if you want matte, gloss medium if you want gloss. Right, a little bit of red, a little bit of orange, a little bit of flow aid. I think I might need to put in just a little of this burnt umber just to darken it. All right, moment of truth. This part is going to be really, really messy. No going back, we're doing it. Tomato soup all over the board. It's definitely orange now. I'm just trying to suck up a few of the little spots that are just a little bit too much, but it should lighten up a lot as it dries. I definitely didn't lose any color. <laughs> it looks like Campbell's tomato soup exploded on this board. It's very, very orange, which I kind of like. It's very saturated. 
And on the bottom of every single one of these little stalactites, there's like a little drop of blood of this orangey stuff. Kind of like in the movie Day of the Dead, where all the guys are trapped in a shopping mall. The zombies all bleed orange blood because I guess that's the only blood they could afford for that movie. But it looks really nice. Just a little drip coming off of each one. But I do want to tone down the orange just a little bit in some spots. There we go. That is a ground I can be happy with. But one thing that kind of got lost a little bit is these magical mushrooms. They're not as magical as I'd like them to be. So I think I might just repaint them. And step one is going to be spraying on some elemental bolt. Yeah, that already adds so much more. It's like a chocolate chip cookie if you don't see enough chocolate chips. It's really disappointing, but this, this is enough chocolate chips. And the board slightly looks like a chocolate chip cookie. I mean, very slightly. A little bit of a frightening amount of red, but this analogy works. Now for a shot of white paint on every mushroom. Little bit of speed paint. Quite a bit of speed paint medium, and just a little bit of fluorescent blue. This dinosaur skull could really use a highlight. Those are some magical mushrooms. Now it's time for this little pool. Now this pool has existed for millions and millions of years and is the only source of fresh, slightly contaminated by the psychedelic mushroom source of water in the cave. Now for a little dimensional magic, a little Maj Paj dimensional magic. I wonder, I kind of want it to be blue water. Do I make some blue water and pour it in? Or do I pour it right in and then add blue and maybe I'll get like some swirlies because it won't be perfectly mixed. I mean, I could just test to see if that works, but uh... Maybe just a little more. I think I'm getting to the upper limits of how dimensional you can get with this magic. Dang, I think it doesn't look very natural, but I think it looks really cool. I can't wait for it to be dry and it's crystal clear with that blue held in there. This might be my favorite board. This is going to be the board I beat Sean on. It's so beautiful. It has a great balance of heavy terrain, light terrain, a little bit of vantage point, but not too much. Ah, oh, and it's so cool. I mean, it has a ceiling. How many boards out there actually have a ceiling? Ah, oh, everywhere you look at it, it is so, so interesting to look at. All of this weird organic texture and the stalagmites and the stalactites. And we're making boards like this every single month. This is the month of February. If you sign up to our Patreon, you will receive this. But we're gonna be making so many more boards of this quality. I have lots of ideas of what we should make, but I'm sure you guys do too. So please leave a comment down below of some ideas that you would like to see realized. In fact, we have an idea to create the bridge of a 40K starship. And if you guys like that idea, help this video get to 10,000 likes, and we will get hard at work on that project. Oh, it is so much fun to start out with an idea and then have it turn out this epic. Oh, the Goblin Rave Cave. My little gobos are gonna have so much fun partying in this cave. It's gonna be wild. He's gonna go for a swim in the little pool. <laughs>